starting Now we are starting the program. Friends, welcome to this 14th session of South Asian Online Literary Conference being jointly organized by the Sahith Academy and the Foundation of Sark Writers and Literature. We are uh, happy that uh, two of our participants have joined, Mr. Najib Manalai from Afghanistan who will also be chairing this session and uh, Madam Sanjida Hussain from Bangladesh. Uh, and our other two participants must be in the process of joining this program. Uh, we will wait for them. In the meantime, we, we can start the program. Uh, since we have around 40 minutes for this session, I would uh, request each participant to take around seven to eight minutes and please adhere to this time limit. No, 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 no. And 11, 11 minutes. Okay, 11 minutes. Okay, 11 minutes. Look at the program. Okay, okay. So, so, so before you start, I will also request you to introduce yourself so that our viewers can see and uh, uh, know something about you before you make your presentation. So, I will now invite, we will begin with the... Uh, um, Mrs. Sanjida Hussainji. Uh, Madam, come up with your uh, presentation, please. Unmute yourself first. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. Hello, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Namaskar. I'm, I'm Sanjida Hussain. I teach English literature at the Department of English, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. Um, I write short stories in English, and I'm delighted to take part in today's session on fiction. Uh, my stories are set in the cities and villages of Bangladesh, my homeland. They tell you about the people of Bangladesh, their relationship with each other, um, th and the things that surround them, the trees, the plants, the birds, the animals, the insects, uh, the diseases they suffer from. But most importantly, I write about women empowerment. In my stories, you will see very strong, independent uh, female voices. And today I'm going to read from one of my recently published stories. The title of the story is Malediction. And it was published on in the Daily Star, uh, a leading English newspaper in my country in Bangladesh. And the story was published on June 26. Um, so the story, uh, it opens with a grandmother telling bedtime stories to her grandson. Um, and in a way, she makes him aware about a creature that arrives at their village at a regular interval to disrupt uh, the life of the village. And this creature is a fairy who offers gold coins full of pictures. And if in any way anyone receives the gift, they are bound to give whatever the fairy asks them. Um, from you. So uh, the I'm, I'm going to read from the story now. According to the legend, the gift of the fairy becomes a curse for those who fail to recognize, protect, and cherish it. And the protagonist of the story, Karimun Nesa, guards her son, Shahar Ali, every time for her own family members, her grandmother, her husband, have been the victim of the fairy. So she abides by strict restrictions to save her family members. But her son, Shahur Ali, he abhors the restrictions imposed on him by his mother. Hard from telling his real name to strangers, especially to unknown women. He was forbidden to get out of his village. But Shahur Ali was now 25, a full-grown adult man 
desiring to seek adventure by setting himself out from his village. As soon as Karimunesa had a hint of his intentions, she got him married to the daughter of her brother, her niece, Kohinoor. Kohinoor was pretty and well-mannered. She knew how to cook, clean, and wash. And within a year of her marriage, she bore Shahur Ali, a beautiful baby boy. They named him Kitab Ali. Everything was all right, for honeybees gathered nectar in honeycombs made within the wooden boxes placed in the flower garden. Bees arrive where peace and happiness prevail. Yet, Shahur Ali felt restless and unhappy. On a hot, humid Sunday midnight, he went out of his home in a frenzy. He came far away from his village and found a round log of a dead tree. It was a fairy ring, they said. Stepping on it would take you one to the fairy land. And Shahur Ali was tired of his confinement. A beautiful woman in white with a pair of lucid wings and a silver wand in her hand appeared in front of him. What is your name, my dear lad? She spoke with a tinge of honey in her voice. Yes. Shahur Ali, he replied with his full awareness of his mother's restrictions. Come with me. You'll be the king of our land. Open the boxes to gather honey the next morning. She found that the bees had flown away from their hives. Shahur Ali came back after five months. He had been to a town populated by women only. He saw the unimaginable there, ate the unthinkable, and learned magic tricks people were unaware of. Shahur Ali narrated his adventure at his village tea stall in the afternoon. Welcome him wholeheartedly. They consider him now to be the fairy spy. And the fairy also arrives to ask for her prize in return to the gift she gave him. So the rest of the story tells you about what happens to Shahur Ali as he pays his prize for disappointing the fairy. But my story is not just about the fairy or her victims. The story is about Karimunlesa, mother, and later the grandmother, for whom the only thing happened to keep the child safe. And for ensuring her child safe, what she's capable of doing, to what extent she can travel to. That is the main theme of the story. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure to join the session. And I would like to thank... Uh, Shaita Academy and Postwal Foundation of Surf Writers and Literature for arranging this year's South Asian Online Literary Conference. And thank you so much for having me on this platform. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Sanjita ji. It was a very good story. Thank and you. We, 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 and now I request uh, Najib ji, please unmute yourself. Najib ji. Najib ji. Good morning. Yes. Uh, good, good morning, morning again. Please, please present uh, your story, sir. Uh, I'm uh, Najib Manale from uh, Afghanistan. Uh, right now, I teach uh, Pashto language in uh, Paris, uh, Institut National de Langue de Civilisation Orientale. Uh, till the last uh, sorrowful ev events in Afghanistan, uh, I was uh, working in Afghanistan, but uh, I had to <clears throat> come back to France uh, a few days ago and uh now i'm i'm here uh i i dedicate must must much of my work uh to translation and to uh, make bridges uh, between languages and between people uh, and i write some uh, poetry and some short stories uh, today i would like to read uh, some uh, some of my poems to you Ora, la caduguri urezi, che mi aduna l'ur, polor hamiusi, 
کټول بو بشم تو شم په زمکه پریوزم خوړ شم سین شم شیلا شیلا شم بیا بلا هم زما خوګیلې وانی خپل سیوري تا په سوړم کلاود اف لایک ا دنس کلاود ایم چیزد بای دا وینز می آی فال ان ڈراپس ان دا لینڈ ان بیکم ا فلڈ ا ریور ا ٹورنٹ I will still my light head, darling, carry my shadow where you stand. Najib ji, can you please speak a little louder? Your voice is coming very low. Uh, okay, I, I, will try. I, will, I will try. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Not a one is some that the booty tangi la zaha lash is in the gira. همه یک جا بگذارم ریز ریزش کردم I couldn't in the narrow coffin of moments put the dead body of my life in one piece I smashed it سلامات ز هر شپا جارو پلاس د خپلو وچو هیلو د ماتو شو څانګو ټوټې را ټولې کړمه له تیګه شو ارمانونو او رستو یادونو پنډ او بکر جوړوم د خپلو وچو هیلو څانګو ته ور اچوم تمه مې دا وي ګلې چې راته وبه ګورې زما په زړه کې د لمبه شو هیلو دانه دانه سپرغې به ستا سترګو ته ودرېږي خو بدمرغي مې دا ده چې له لمبو نه مې رڼا تللې ده هره شپه ایره ایره شم سلی می یوسی و نه خط خبری گه هم نه I every night hold a broom collect the spread pieces of my dried hopes and broken branches I turn my stoned wishes and rotten memories into a lighter I put fire to the branches or my dead of my dead wishes my expectation is that you may look at me your eyes would distinguish the sparks of blazing hopes in my heart my bad fortune is that i burn i turn into ashes flying in the wind but you can never see me and this is the last one uh, miad د غره په څوکو واورې ورېږي زا او ته دواړه یخنۍ وهلې لار رانه ورکه هیلې کنګل شوې راځه چې کېنو لږ به دمه شو په یخ وهلو موټ به جوړ کړو د سپینو واورو په سړه پاڼه د خپلې مینې د خپلو هیلو د عهد ټکي بیا به ترې لاندې په خوارۍ لیک کړو خپل دوه نومونه چې پسرلی شي دلته به راشو یوه چینه به ښکته بهېږي موږ به ترې دواړه لپې ډکې سره به وڅخو په مینه مینه د خپلو هیلو د خپلو مینې ساړه اهدونه ان د ټاپ اف د ماونټینز فال د سنو یو ان می بوت چلنګ هیونګ اور ویز لاست اور ہوپس آر فریزنګ لیټ سیټ ہیر وی ول ټیک سم ریسٹ وت فروزن ہینڈز وی ول ڈرو and the white page of snow words of promise of our life of our love of our hopes then and assigning we will write with pain our two names when spring comes we will be back here a spring will be flowing down we will take handful of water and will drink lovingly our hopes of our loves the chilling promises <clears throat> najib ji thank you. thank you very much najib ji you can you can take some more time present some of your more poems we have sufficient time uh, okay uh, the connection is bad uh, i try to be uh, short 
کاش زما استاد تر منځه دا واټن وای د ختیځ او لویدیز هومره تل اڅ بد ګاوندی ای وش د ډیسټنس بټوین یو ان می وار اس فار اس ایست ان ویست یو ار سچ ا یو ار سچ ا ناستی نیبر وی هاف سم سم ناستی نیبرز a couple of more homeland homeland is not only a soil it is not mountains and plains it is no deserts and forests it is not ravens and rivers villages or cities huts and houses graves and gravestones when one finds his place among humans sees the light of love in someone's eyes familiar smiles on someone's lips when on someone's forehead one distinguishes welcoming signs a place where one one's dignity is safe and cares about someone else's dignity where his eyes it cry for some when where his eyes cries for someone's pains somebody spells tears for his sorrows when somebody shares one's pleasures and shares others joys this is what we can call homeland thank you. you najib ji uh, you presented some very good poems and uh, what was the other language uh, uh, in afghanistan is it was it pashtuni or some other language uh, in afghanistan we have uh, pashto uh, dari which is a, a variety of persian and uzbek languages are the main languages three official languages and we have also uh, about 30 other small languages okay it was uh, very soothing and sweet so, so i congratulate what, what, what you I, for your what points. i did was uh, in pashto and dari both because i write in uh, three languages in pashto in dari which you recited your poem sir it was very soothing uh, it, it was dari and pashto and yeah, uh, yeah. another afghan friend uh, was supposed to join us uh, miss uh, zarguna saiqin No, no i think they are facing some internet problem maybe yeah. so in the uh, main time in the main time uh, since was, we have sufficient time can yeah, i was, uh, shall i request sanjeeda ji uh, if you have some poems or uh, uh, some yes uh, sorry zarwar uh, saqin i was in touch with me uh, last night she she sent me uh, two of her poems okay Please, please. Uh, which, which, I, which I translated into English. Uh, I will not read the uh, Uzbek uh, version because I don't speak Uzbek. Uh, but uh, I will share with you uh, the translation of these two yeah, short yeah. poems. Yeah, yeah. Please come up, sir. Please, please. By Zarqura Saqin. Yeah. Zarqura Saqin is a young lady uh, from uh, northern Afghanistan. She writes in Uzbek language. Uh, she's a, a lexicographer and uh, she has studied uh, Uzbek language in uh, uh, Afghanistan universities. I did not come to come to I did not come to contemplate the spring, a silent tree and a bird telling me the story of life will suffer. <laughs> like a soldier gone for war. he one day will come back instead of a gun in his hand he will hold a beautiful flower for me these were two short poems by zarguna saqin okay and i find them very cute okay so as i said earlier uh, since we have some more time uh, can i request sanjeeda ji to you to uh, present any poems or one short story if you want um okay so uh like i would like to read from one of my uh, unpublished story is that okay ah yeah yes all right so um it is a story about a teddy bear and uh, his name is anis and it 
the story is based on one of my uh, like personal experiences. I went to Malaysia uh, to study at the University of Malaya. Uh, I studied English literature there and I completed my degree in 2018. And I used to have a teddy bear. Which degree, madam? Uh, masters. Okay. Yes, uh, my second master's in English literature. Okay. So um, I was there alone. I used to live alone in a room in a hostel. So I had this teddy bear and his name is Anis. Anis in Arabic means a companion, okay. uh, a friend. So uh, what I used to do after a long day of my classes and lectures and study, I used to come back to my room and um, I used to speak with that teddy bear. I, I opened my heart out. I, I used to share my joys, my sorrows with, with the bear. And uh, what happened? I forgot him when, when I got pregnant with my son. I have a son, a two-year-old son. Um, I, I forgot the teddy bear because I had a new companion whom I could speak to. So I, I forgot about the bear. And the baby is now two years old and I found the bear once again and I give the teddy bear to my son and now my son plays with him. Oh, very good. <laughs> so the relationship... This is very interesting. The, the, the relationship that I had, the bear, you know, bear, the teddies, the stuffed toys, they're inanimate objects. Uh, they cannot tell you how, how they feel. I, I completely deserted the bear. And... Uh, the bear must have felt bad if it was a living thing, if it were a living thing. But then once again, when I gave the bear to my son, they have built up this relationship and they play together. And um, it's such a joy to see them together that they have found companions in each other. So I'm going to read from that story, the middle part of the story. So you are going to hear the voice of the bear. Uh, okay. What, what he uh, thinks about me and, and my son. Um, it was more than two years ago. As soon as she felt the presence of the baby inside her, she started giving less attention to me. I was there, not discarded yet, and listened to her as she talked with her unborn child for hours, putting her hands around her belly. Sometimes I was allowed to sit beside the mother and the son and sometimes I was sent to the fish to spend time with them. She left, she left me bending over the round glass bowl where the two goldfish were kept. Stupid water creatures. I had to remind them of who I am at every three minutes. I watched them swimming around the plastic plant rooted inside the pebbles in the water, just waiting for her to come back. I could not afford to be angry. This is steady bear mechanism. You just absorb the pain and sadness of the one who hugs you. When you're upset, the most you can do is to stare with your blank, black eyes. Gradually, the baby learned to kick within her mother and used to respond to his mother's joy and sorrow. She reassured him about the wonderful world in which he will be brought upon. A world better than the dark womb where he is tossing and turning and floating in slimy water. The baby sucked his thumb inside his mother's womb and eagerly listened to his mother's voice. A voice that you wait to listen amidst your uneventful solitude. Back in my country, I used to wait for her to come back from her university to her hostel room. I sat idly inside her dark cupboard and raised my ears as I recognized her footsteps tiredly approaching after a hard day of study. The first thing she did upon her entrance was to open the door of the cupboard and check how I'm doing. Next, she had her bath and sat with a mug of coffee and started telling me what she has been doing all day. She held me tight during her happiness and soaked me with her tears when she was hurt. Not a single day passed without her talking to me. She spoke to me every day about every matter. Her pregnancy was a difficult one, I know. And she focused all her attention to her baby's health and safety, I can understand. But at the time of his, her son's birth was approaching, 
She put me inside a drawer full of old clothes one day and forgot me. So the baby uh, reunites with the, with the bear one day. The mother is a teacher and she needs to check her script. She, she needs to return her exam scripts. So she has to keep the baby somehow busy because the mother is ba- busy. The baby is going to trouble her in her in her work. So what she does, she gives the teddy bear to the baby so that he can play with the baby, yeah. uh, with the bear. So what happens? The baby forgets the rest of the toys, everything that belongs to him. He becomes single-mindedly obsessed mm-hmm. and fully preoccupied with the bear that the baby forgets about everything else and creates this bond once again uh, with the bear. So they find companions uh, in each other. So the story ends there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sanjita ji. It was really a nice story. And I will request you to send this story to some paper or magazine for publication and definitely it will be published. Oh, thank you so much. I yeah, will. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, our two other uh, participants could not join, maybe due to internet problems. So, now, uh, 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 shall I request, uh, Madam Ajit Korji, would you like to say something? Najib Manalai is my precious brother. He is living in exile and peril. And from there, he could connect. Absolutely correct type. I thank the profusely. And I thank Sandida for a perfect, perfect short story. This is how a short story should be. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, so uh, I, uh, I, on behalf of Scythe Academy and the foundation of SARC, writers and literature thank both of you and madam ajit korji also for participating in this lively session uh, namaste and thank you very much thank you thank you goodbye goodbye it was a pleasure meeting all of you